The road trip is over. North Central's track and field teams are back on Naperville soil, and so are we, recapping a successful visit to Canton, New York for both teams. Just how successful the coaches and athletes are here to tell us next on the season finale of the Cardinal Report. And first up is Frank Gramarosa, the men's track and field coach. Hi, Frank. Hi. And welcome to our studio. We have a, uh, a great day today because you're back from Canton, New York. The goal for this season was to win conference. Ultimately, you did that. It was a while ago, but uh, I'm sure you still want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that's our number one team goal because with the more guys than the team contribute to the conference championships than they do uh, to the nationals. The goal at nationals is get as many qualifiers, but there are standards to meet. There are... Uh, a conference, we get five entries per event, so over 56, I think, athletes competed in the conference championship, and we came out winners for the fifth year in a row since I've been the head coach, and our 38th overall uh, in uh, men's track and field. But something more recent will be easy to remember because you just came back from Canton, New York. Uh, seventh place finish, ultimately a very successful weekend in Canton. What was the game plan going in, and do you think you successfully executed it? Yes, we want to get as many qualifiers as we can, and we had 11 qualifiers, and there's always going to be some ups and downs in the national championships. It is the nationals, and uh, anytime you're in the top 10, I think it's a great performance, and if you can score in the 30s, you're going to come home with a trophy. So we were eight or nine points short of that, and uh, we just got to build for the future. Well, how about Travis Morrison on double duty? He gets sixth in the 10K, which was outstanding in its own right. But then he has to shift over to the 5K where he finishes 16th on, on day three. It's always tough because a, as a distance runner, you have to find that extra gear. When you run a 10K and then suddenly you have to go into a 5K, I'm sure it's hard to find the extra gear at the end. Yeah, for a lot of events, trying to double back one or two days in a row gets tough because most of our meets are one day meets and you don't have to double back. And he did an outstanding job, you know, being the national champion indoors and then trying to get to the outdoor season and double the distance, the 10K. And uh, he's been at nationals before, uh, outdoors, and not with great success. So, you know, he really came through uh, personally and for the team to get in there, sixth place, score some points, and then try to rest up for Friday, which was, uh, which was brutal. You know, they, at some point, whether it's fast or slow, there's going to be a big gap. And if you can't, uh, you can't make that break and get yourself up in there, it, it's a struggle. And uh, he fought hard and, and then just lost a little bit at the end to trying to, uh, the guys who were a lot fresher, uh, you know, went after it. And I think he was ranked 15th uh, going into the 5K, so we knew there wasn't a great chance for him there, but he went after it. Well, Megan Costanzo for the women's team had to do the same thing. Honestly, I don't even know how you can prepare for that. No, no running in the world could really get you ready to run that much. But uh, other things you might not have been prepared for, that Luke Winder finish was unbelievably tight. Yes, uh, what a competitor for a freshman to, to be in that kind of competition with some other younger guys. Uh, they're going to go at it the next couple of years, but uh, what a great uh, great performance for him. Was that the weekend's most dramatic event? Because to me it seemed uh, uh, there, it might have been. There were a couple, but certainly you start off the meet like that and uh, be in that kind of a competition where it, uh, you know a lot of the guys go vault after vault after vault to try to separate themselves. and. Uh, you know, the NCAA doesn't like all those, all those ties, so the increments aren't very great. And uh, you have to sit around a lot and try to keep focus and then watch your teammates while they're running the 10K. So, uh, you know, Luke did an outstanding job. The true surprise of the weekend had to come in the high jump. Femi Oyewale ranked 20th going into it, but ultimately he finds a way to clear two vaults, or two jumps, uh, finishes 10th overall. The high jump is a very wonky competition. You never know what you're going to get from the top-ranked guy, yeah. barely even cleared one, and the 19th-ranked guy 
finished third. It was a crazy event. Yeah, it's uh, any vertical jump is tough, and certainly weather conditions uh, change things, and you just have to have a frame of mind to go in and compete, and that's what he did. I mean, he cleared two meters or more almost every meet, but, you know, there was a strong wind, I think, as he made his J. It was hitting him in the face, but, you know, he competed. I know he's disappointed, but uh, that's the up and downs of track and field, and uh, we try to build those characteristics as you face the ups and downs uh, in life. How about we break down Aaron Sabat's 1500, finishes it in 3 minutes, 51.51 seconds, 4th uh, place in the final, 7th in the prelim, so ultimately he improves. Yes, and that's again a competitive uh, response in that meet. The pace was dragging. Times don't matter at nationals. I mean, he ran four seconds faster to qualify, which you have to do because they only take the top 20. But uh, he stuck his nose in there, competed. I think he got himself in some trouble and being boxed in a little bit, but he finally uh, was able to break through because everybody at nationals is strong and everybody ha is fast. And, you know, he stuck his nose in there and really competed and found an opening down the home stretch to, you know, sneak up in there for, uh, you know, a fourth place when he came in to meet ranked fifth. And finally, let's get your overall feelings on how 2015 went. The sad thing is you're losing Derek Nelson, coach Tom Roderick, on the way out too, but what are your thoughts on the way things transpired this year? Well, again, Derek was ranked, uh, I believe, 18th, and he got 15th. Uh, Zion Mason, another hurdler, was ranked 20th, and he got... Uh, uh, 15th also and um, you know again it's just an honor for every all 11 guys to be at the national championships. Well it was a, a great time at Canton New York glad to see your face there and glad to see you again today thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. All right after this a two-time national champion as just a freshman Luke Winder along with distance runner Ryan Root. Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, where's that bear? <coughs> Here with Pole Vault star Luke Winder and a sterling performer for the distance team, Ryan Root. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey and coming off a relaxing trip to Canton, New York. Uh, so that's a good thing. And you ready for the show today, Winder? You were uh, never really battle tested during the regular season, uh, but you get to the Nationals, and every time uh, you run into Tim Moses, you have Andrew Bartman always in the way. The top three finishers, it's indoor, it's outdoor, exactly the same. How do you find the extra gear when, for the most part, you never really were battle tested going into nationals? Yeah, you know, um, I, I knew going in that like it was going to be like indoors, how uh, it was going to be a battle, and they were gonna they were gonna perform because I mean it's a national competition, and we've got the competitive vibe going on, so uh, it was just going to be like indoors, just really making sure to focus on the things that my dad has to say and really listening to him and. Um, you know, throughout the year, I, every once in a while, I'd have a couple meets where there'd be some vaulters, but um, it, it is tough sometimes whenever you don't always have competition. You can, I could kind of go about my competition how I like, because usually whenever I'm in is when nobody else is. So uh, it's hard to get used to, but uh, eventually it's just kind of uh, an easy flow, and I get to enter into these national competitions and compete with some guys that are at a really high level. Well, Brian, coming off a broken elbow going into your race, the steeplechase. Uh, you were perhaps a little bit more under the radar than Luke, but you finished fifth. All these events can be very, as I said to your coach Frank, they can be very wonky. You never know what to expect. You go into it. I hear you're really good at breaking down a race. How did that steeplechase go for you? Um, we just, I think it all started in a long time ago, back in the fall when Ken and I decided we were going to focus on the steeplechase together. We're going to get to that national championship together and throughout the season we had put up some decent marks and we got we were right in the middle of the pack when it came to the national qualifiers up until the very last week and we weren't sure if we were even going to race that weekend or not and thank god we did because i would have been bumped out i only made it by 0.14 seconds in the last spot so we get to nationals and you know the coaches prepare us so well for those situations just being confident in ourselves so 
we got through the prelim nice and easy, and yeah, we were under the radar. No mm -hmm. one expected much from us. And when I got to the final, it's just the regular, you know, just like any other race. You just go out there, just compete. You know, I didn't have to worry about time, thankfully. I just had to <laughs> compete and get those spots. And Luke, uh, you know, you were uh, looking at this whole freshman year as a whole, pretty flawless. It's hard to really build on on the way things went. The last time I had you on, I joked that you might win eight national championships. Well, you're on pace now, but of course, there's always still th stuff you have to work on. The best athletes always find that one thing in the off season that they want to work on. What do you think that might be for you? You know, I think I just am really this summer really going to focus on making sure to build up uh, some more conditioning and really improve uh, upon my technique and my vaulting and in my strength and in my speed. And that's really the stuff that you, that's the only stuff that you can kind of control. So, I mean, uh, once you improve speed and strength, you can get on bigger poles, grip higher, and do a lot of things that I couldn't do this year. And that's something that I think is really going to improve on my vaulting for uh, next season. And obviously, it's the season just ended, but uh, that's instantly what my dad and I start to talk about is what we're going to do next season to make it be even better. That's what the best athletes do. And the best athletes are also very resilient. You fell behind two heights for a moment. There was a little worry, but you made it happen. It was a very successful day for you. You won the national title. But Spencer LaHaye, can't say enough about him because he too uh, had himself a bit of a gritty run, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I'm really proud of him. I know uh, all year, I know that's been a goal in the back of his head, but my dad's always told him not to focus on that because that's something that could really screw up somebody mentally is if they just really focus on, I want to go to nationals, I want to go to nationals. He just made sure to, I know he, towards the uh, end of the year, he really focused on what my dad had to tell him and it it really helped him to be able to mentally get in the right spot and he was able to go to nationals and make two bars and you know you can't really ask much more than that i think it was his third highest bar he's cleared in his life so it was a really good day for him ryan you fell over the barrier in last year's prelim you come out you win here today or over the weekend um did that make it sweeter knowing that you came off of that and you worked all this way through the recovery process and uh, came out on top yeah, I definitely, that was in the back of my mind going into this weekend, you know. It was such a bitter feeling to make my first national team outdoors, you know, in the steeplechase last year, then falling in the prelims. And I had to sit that whole week watching everyone else compete, and it, it, was, it was tough. And I think, it, sadly, one of my goals <laughs> this week was don't fall, because Right after I was recovered from my broken elbow at the Drake Relays, I fell twice over the water barrier, and it was, it was kind of a nightmare-type race, even though I, I ended up finishing and I got a lot of credit for doing so. It was, it was worrisome. I wasn't sure if I was going to be confident anymore or not, but you know, with the help of Ken and the coaching staff, I definitely found my stride down the stretch and I just started attacking the barriers a lot more often and that, that falling moment last year just kind of fell to the back of my head. Well, I'll tell you what I'm bitter about is you shaved the mustache, <laughs> but we're so glad to see you. Thanks for being on today. Awesome weekend for you guys and glad to have you on. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we switch the focus to the women's team next, starting with head coach Carrie Clarko. Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire, but you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Here with us now is head women's track and field coach, Carrie Clocko. Hi, Carrie. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you too, and uh, especially coming off of the best finish in your tenure at Nationals, you finish in sixth, out of your 13 years, that's uh, the best. That has to be one of the best teams you've personally coached. Overall, I'd say things mm -hmm. went pretty well for you. It was an excellent meet. First of all, the women were, were great together. Definitely treated nationals like a team meet versus individual. Um, they were a lot of fun, and they had a great purpose going in. They were very focused and ready to perform. And starting with Liz Composto in the pole vault, that was mm -hmm. uh, the very first event on Thursday in mm -hmm. Canton, New York. Yeah. And she, uh, top vault of 12 feet, three and a half inches. She finishes in eighth place. 
Uh, yeah. It's a great finish, an All-American finally outdoors. Yeah. So she gets that accomplishment. Uh, I think she had a great day too. Yeah, it was great to see her start us off. Um, you know, our goal was that everyone would be able to be All-American and place higher than we came in, or we were ranked going in as a team. And it really came down to everybody doing their little part. So just focus on what you need to do. And she started us off very and well. She had such tough competition too. Mm -hmm. Simran Verdi, that girl, you know, she comes in at the very end and she, her warm-up vault is higher than all the other vaulters. Yeah. Obviously, she's uh, extremely talented, and Liz dealt with her very well, I think. Oh, she did. And she, Liz doesn't get um, rattled by a competition. She always welcomes competition. She always has. So she was very confident going in and um, really hit all first attempts until the height she went out. So she really had a nice meet. And she was getting really emotional talking about the end of her career. And I'm mm -hmm. sure looking back on it, you can feel a little bit emotional, too. Oh, yeah. I mean... She's a gem. I mean, from day one, I knew that she was something special. And um, to see her career end, it's just, you know, I hate to see her walk out the door. We have our seniors are just such a great group overall that um, but there are a lot of shoes to fill. <laughs> so, mm. Well, we had Coach Gramoroso on a little bit earlier and talked a little bit about um, what Travis Morrison, he was double shifted with his 10K mm -hmm. and the 5K. Mm -hmm. Megan Costanzo goes through the exact same thing, has a great 10K. Mm -hmm. uh, she finishes third overall. But in the 5K, it's tough to find that extra gear when you mm -hmm. need it so badly in a distance race. But she just ran a 10K, so mm -hmm. she dealt with it pretty okay. She did great, actually. Um, really, we knew her 10K was her best event, even though ranking-wise it didn't show that way. Mm -hmm. um, going in, we knew that that was really her best event. In the 5K, there were a ton of women that were fresh, hadn't raced yet. So we knew that going in, too. So we really put it into that 10K. Um, she loves that race, and I think she surprised some people, but not us. So that's through with day one. Then we get to day two, a very light day for really all the teams involved. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have Lena Baker that day making things happen, mm -hmm. second All-American title. I think she had a great day. She did. Um, she had some really consistent throws um, going on uh, in, in the competition itself. She actually has a foot injury, that, so she hasn't competed since conference. That she's, We just want to be careful with it so she could throw at nationals. And she really put things together very well, really focused on the process, and got out there and really competed in a great field of, of throwers. And she had to deal with Giselle Klotz. Mm -hmm. So did Ebony Stallworth. Yeah. And Ebony really came out flying, won another All-American title. Yeah, and she actually made it in our last throw in the prelim. She really pulled it together um, and really focused in on, again, the process and getting it done. And um, had a big throw to get into prelims and then had um, several throws over 14 meters. So really had a great finish to her career. Mm -hmm. And then, so basically throws, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big highlight of the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. Throws always seem to be a really strong suit for you. And I think it mm -hmm. kind of showed through with Nationals, didn't it? Yeah, and we actually have grown into that place as a team. Um, we've really developed overall. I mean, if you really look at the meet, we had seven events covered and we had the throws, the jumps, which is pole vault the hurdles, distance, relays, we really had everything. So it was really exciting to be able to have a very uh, dynamic uh, group of women there. Mm -hmm. And you had, in the 4x100, you know, we have a couple guests who can get a little more into the nitty gritties of that mm -hmm. uh, race. But I think what I want to get from you is looking at Renfro, Roar, Olsen, Gant, mm -hmm. they seem to be a very tight-knit group. They really seem to care about each other. You saw it after the race, the big mm -hmm. hugs afterward. Yeah. I think that speaks to the team cohesion, not just from them, but overall. Yeah, they really have strong synergy as a group. They really trust each other. And really, when you look at um, going into the meet, um, Madison was the only one in an open event. Um, and for all for our women to place fourth with a school record and really um, very, very strong time um, was really exciting. I had some coaches saying, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you guys did that. And I said, it all comes down to team synergy. You know, they really trust each other. And they've been working together for two years. Um, and they really put it together. And it showed in the, mm -hmm. the final standings, sixth mm -hmm. place, the best in your tenure, second best of all time. Mm -hmm. it, throughout the season, you had all these split squads, and it seemed the goal was to put them into split squads, give them the best competition possible, and really ready to, for uh, outdoor nationals. And it turned out it worked perfectly, didn't it? It did. Um, yeah, I look at uh, keeping our team together as being very important. But when you actually look at each person and what, where they are and growing as an athlete, you have to put them in the best situation to be as competitive po as possible. And you're still keeping the team in mind. Um, so you may split the squad on some meets, but um, what that does is make them prepared for championship season, whether it's conference championships or the national championships. Having them all come home um, All-Americans is really exciting. Um, but they treated it like any other track and field meet. We said, you know, every meet's a championship meet from January to the end of May. Um, and it, a track is a track, so just get out there and compete, and they did. They certainly did, and it was great to see it all season mm -hmm. long, and great to have you on again today. Thank you very much.
All right, coming up, Bernie Olson and Madison Renfro. This is TCR. physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Back on TCR with Sprinter, Brittany Olson and Hurdler, Madison Renfro, welcome. Welcome. And Madison, we'll start with you. Uh, so funny, the award ceremony got in the way of you uh, between the 4x100 and the 100 hurdles. It's so strange for an awards ceremony to get in the way because you have to go from, you know, thinking about the awards ceremony and you're in a jovial environment there and now you suddenly have to switch your focus out of nowhere to a, a race that needs to be won. How'd you do it? Well, <laughs> uh, when I get ready for races anyways, um, I'm usually really excited and happy anyways. So it kind of <laughs> just made it a little bit easier actually to transition into that. Mm -hmm. And um, there, are other, there are two other girls that were also hurdling. So... I had like a little sense of community with that. Mm -hmm. We were all in the same situation. And um, I was just, I, I enjoyed being around the awards and then going back to hurdling because, uh, I don't know, it just cut my energy up. Mm -hmm. I was ready. So. And Brittany, you were with her for the 4x100, which was just before that 100 hurdles race. Uh, if you can give us an evaluation of how that all transpired, uh, what would you say? Well, our 4x1 did awesome. It was a lot of fun to compete with the three other girls and uh, putting it all out on the line. Um, at that point for finals, we were really only like looking at what place we got, and then it was so kind of like funny. to We went up to each other, and we're like, oh, yeah, we got fourth. And Madison's like, yeah, we PR'd also. And we're like, oh, my goodness. Because <laughs> we really don't look at the time so much in finals as, as the place. And uh, um, we just put it all out there on the line, and got it done and it was just awesome to get top top coach, four. Coach Clockone is always harping on uh, the synergy of the team and I think that shows through especially with your group. Do you think it helped translate to wins on the track all year? You know in practice if you have a hard day or handoffs are rough um, it's really easy to just shake off a bad day when you have that energy with each other and that trust because you know like when it comes down to business we're gonna be fine and we're gonna get it to each other and that, that synergy is, that's what it comes down to, is like the trust that we have. Madison, do you like having your races back-to-back uh, -back with very little time in between, or do you prefer them to be spaced out? Um, for the 4x1 and hurdles, I like it when it's um, close like that, because uh, I'm just, I, fee I feed off the excitement and energy that we just had, and I know, like, you know, we just had an awesome 4x1, so now I'm just going to go, like, do have an amazing race in the hurdles, so I really enjoy it, and um, I don't have to build up that, you know, like that anticipation, that excitement, because mm -hmm. I know it's like it's right around the corner. Yeah, so, so you can do it one time, and you go right through mm -hmm. with all the same energy. Brittany, uh, you ran throughout your career a wide variety of different races. Mm -hmm. uh, the funny thing for me is you did well, really, in all of them, but in this one, I keep mentioning the synergy, the team cohesion. Did that, did that bond with uh, the three others in the 4x100, did that make it your favorite uh, race to run, or was there something else you enjoyed more? No, definitely the 4x1 would, would definitely be my favorite. Um, our, it's just like our energy, like when we start warming up, whenever we're around each other, it's just so natural, and uh, we just have a blast. And so when we're warming up and focused on our, on our race, and like we all spread out, like say we love each other, see you at the finish line, see how we go. Like, it helps how many times we've done it. Like, we're so comfortable with each other that, like, once, when I get to my place, I know that everything, once I, once I receive it and once I hand it off, is going to be done to the best of our abilities. Madison, very interesting story with you. Your high school path is kind of turning out to translate into your college path. It's very uh, similar where you won state your high school senior year. Mm -hmm. Now uh, you win second place here your junior year. And the 100 hurdles, if, uh, if history is an indicator, <laughs> does your senior year look bright? Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> do you, think, do you um, think you have a chance to, to really do exactly the same thing you did before? Uh, yeah, I, have a, I know I have a chance of um, doing that. Uh, I believe in myself, and I'm really excited to see where next year takes me. Well, you guys are both part of one of the best teams in the history of this school. Uh, I have to figure, coming out of Outdoor Nationals at Canton, New York, to finish really the best, uh, probably second best overall ever in the history. Um, does that 
Does that make you feel really proud? Is this your proudest moment, Brittany, as a <laughs> member of North Central? Yes, definitely. This, this year really capped off. I mean, I, I loved being in, on the track team from freshman year till this year, but um, having this year to kind of like cap off uh, my track career ever uh, was really awesome because I got to spend it with some of my favorite teammates and at Nationals. You guys did a fine job in Canton, New York. Uh, glad to have you back and glad to have you on the show for the last time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have one final surprise for you at the other end of this break. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. Well, what a spring season it's been. Between a baseball team winning the CCIW regular season title, the softball team making it in the regional tournament, and the track teams making strides at nationals, it's been a pleasure to have you along for the ride. But now we take you on one more ride on memory lane, a recap of the entire 2014-2015 North Central athletic year.
And before we sign off for the final time, another thank you to all the coaches and athletes that made their way out to the show this season. Don't forget, we return in September with the Red Zone. Thank you for watching. This has been the Cardinal Report.